Welcome to the Not Old Better Show, the show covering all things health, wellness, culture, and more. The show for all of us who aren't old, we're better. Each week, we'll interview superstars, experts, and ordinary people doing extraordinary things, all related to this wonderful experience of getting better, not older. Now, here's your host, the award-winning Paul Vogelzang. Welcome to the Not Old Better Show on radio and podcast. I'm Paul Vogelzang, and this is the program where we delve into the realms of health, wellness, and the vibrant journey of aging. Today's show is brought to you by Gold Co. and ShipStation. Today we bring you a special episode that's not just thought-provoking, but also heartwarming. In the next half hour, we will be exploring the compelling world of Meryl Davids Landau's award-winning novel, Warrior One. This book is really just, it's a beautiful book. It's just a treasure trove of inspiration, spiritual wisdom. It's garnered many awards and accolades like the Bronze Medal in the Independent Publisher Book Awards and the Gold Medal in Inspiration Fiction in the Living Now Book Awards. It just has won award after award. But it's not just the accolades that make this book special. It's the profound journey that it takes us on. Warrior One is a story that resonates deeply with our audience. It's about Lorna Crawford, whom you'll hear about today in our interview with Meryl Davids Landau. Lorna Crawford is a woman who has it all, a loving family, great friends, and a deep connection to spiritual practices like yoga and relaxation, something we can all do a little bit more of this time of year. But life throws a curveball, as it does when Lorna Crawford faces a potential crisis during her pregnancy. This story is not just about facing adversity. It's about maintaining inner peace and resilience through life's unexpected challenges. Let's listen as Meryl Davids Landau reads a passage from her book, Warrior One. My toddler, Lila, is reading a book at her kitchen table when I finally get the call I've been dreading the entire two weeks since we gave that blood. And then the man drinks his coffee, and then he walks out the door, and his baby waves by, Lila says, mimicking a reading cadence describing what she sees in the pictures. Is this Lorna? The woman asks the second I answer the phone. It is. Madison? My caller ID shows it's my midwife's office, but it doesn't sound like Sally. Yep. I shift in my chair, steadying myself to absorb what's coming. Sally wants you to see the genetic counselor. It's a woman named Mai Aang. She set up a tentative appointment for you and Don for Friday at five. Does that work? I shift again. Obviously, there is no getting steady. You know, you have this terrible tendency to leave me hanging. I'm not going to be able to keep my blood pressure down if you don't tell me more about that, more than that she wants me to see this woman. I don't know more than that. Honest. I got a note from Sally to call you with a referral. Does she do that on purpose, I demand? Only partially kidding? To give you plausible deniability? Madison chuckles in the lighter moment downshifts my anxiety a gear. After what seems like an interminable silence, she responds, don't sweat it until you hear if there's something to sweat. Actually, if I'm remembering correctly, you would say don't sweat it even if you do hear that. She has me there. I'm the one who preaches keeping your inner peace, living in the moment, not worrying about things you can't control, yada, yada, yada. Another opportunity to bring my yoga practice into the world. But when I hang up the phone, I burst into tears. What's wrong, Mama? Lila asks, setting down her book and hugging me. I'm not sure what to say. Don and I made a commitment never to lie to our child, especially about our emotions. We grew up in households where our mothers told us everything was fine, even when it wasn't. His mother was literally dying the last time she said this. Yet I can't tell Lila I'm concerned about the baby, since she's so enamored of the idea of him. Mom is not feeling well. I just got a little news that upset me, I say. I'm happy with this, and it will hold as long as she doesn't ask me what the news is. Fortunately, she hones in on the feeling well part. Mama wants to lie in bed to feel better? Exactly what I asked her when she had a tummy ache last week. That's a wonderful idea, Lila. Want to join me? Yes, I help you feel better. As we walk up the stairs hand in hand, I realize she already is. 
That, of course, is our guest today, author Meryl Davids Lando, who has written the award-winning book, Warrior One. So whether you're familiar with the teachings of Gabby Bernstein or Eckhart Tolle, or just starting to explore the world of mindfulness and spiritual wellness, this is the episode for you. This is the time of year when we're thinking about those things. Today's episode is about finding that warrior spirit within any age. Our Not Old Better Show audience, but any age at all. Living life with purpose and peace. So stay tuned as we dive into this engaging conversation with Meryl Davids Landau and discover how Warrior One can inspire us to navigate our own life's challenges with grace and strength. This is the Not Old Better Show, guiding you through the journey of living better, not just older. So please join me in welcoming today the wonderful, award-winning author, Meryl Davids Landau. Meryl Davids Landau, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Appreciate being here. Well, it is so nice to talk to you again. We met via Prevention Magazine, had such a great conversation. Um, Let me begin by thanking you again for that, but also wishing you happy holidays. We're in the month of December, and uh, the month goes by so fast, but I I did want to just start there with with a happy holidays wish. I hope all's well for you and yours. Thank you. Happy holidays to you, too. Thank it's a you. fun month, even if it can be a little stressful. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about... So, we'll kind of get into a little bit of that, because you've shared with me your, your, your new book, Warrior One. You've written wonderful books, uh, Downward Dog, Upward Fog. Warrior One is an award-winning book from the Independent Publishers Um Uh, Book Awards. Congratulations on that. Congratulations on the book, Warrior One. I I really enjoyed the book, and I I know our audience will because it's got this really interesting combination that you don't see elsewhere. Maybe tell us a little bit. Why don't we start there and tell us a little bit about why you wrote the book and how it kind of fits in with uh, some of your other work and what it really took to bring it all together. Thanks, yeah. Warrior One is, uh, and one spelled W-O-N because mm-hmm. it's kind of a play on the yoga yeah. pose, Warrior One, and um, and Dower, Dog, Upper Frog. I wrote them both because um, they're both novels, women, women's uh, fiction. They're both, you know, beach reads, they're like light books that you can take to the beach, but they deal with a serious topic. And although the plots are obviously different from each of the books, the the theme is how do you keep your inner peace no matter what's going on in the world? no matter what's going on in your life. And I was struck by the fact that, you know, I had so many nonfiction books that deal with those subjects. So many yoga books. I mean, I'm a Mm -hmm. certified yoga teacher. Mm -hmm. So many books about, you know, from other contemporary spiritual teachers or ancient um, religious books that that all talk about how, you know, keeping your inner peace and Mm -hmm. the importance of some of these practices. And then I would love to read women's fiction. I like to just Mm -hmm. take books to the beach or sit on my couch and read them. And I thought, where is the book that combines those? Where is the novel that takes these kind of more serious personal growth kinds of questions and puts it into a fun sort of a plot, you know, that that any reader of any women's novels would recognize. And so um, that's what both of these books do. And um, Lorna is um, younger than I am in Warrior One. She's pregnant and the plot revolves around her pregnancy. But these are themes that um, any person of any age uh, has to deal with uh, day in and day out in their own life, no matter what specifics are going on for them. Yeah, I really felt that. I I, I liked Lorna, and, and I do see how much of what she's going through is about our daily lives and about stress and how mindfulness and meditation can help us uh, irrespective of what's going on with all our lives. And so, again, getting kind of kind of back to this theme of fiction but nonfiction and the interesting combination that you've taken there with kind of spiritual teachings, talk to us a little bit about Lorna, the main character, and how the practices that uh, we learn about in the book, how they contribute to her journey and 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 what we might take away from those in terms of putting them into practice in our in our daily lives. So in my first novel, Downward Dog, Upward Fog, which also features Lorna, although the two books are standalone, you can read them separately, Lorna learns about a lot of these different techniques and they really help her in her regular life. 
So when I was thinking about, okay, what would a second book that also features Lorna, now that she's kind of in that place, what would a second book revolve around? What would be the plot of, of, the, of Warrior One? And I realized it needed to be something kind of big that happens in a person's life. So in this case, she's pregnant and questions arise. Is there something wrong with her unborn baby? Mm-hmm. And anybody who's gone through any medical situation knows that whenever questions arise, is there something wrong? They don't get answered right away, right? You have to have tests. You have to wait for results. And usually that leads to another test (laughs) and you wait for that result, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. this is familiar territory to anybody who um, has ever dealt with a medical problem. And so the question becomes, how do you use the tools, yoga, meditation, mindfulness, and many other tools? How do you use those tools and how does Lorna use those tools in your everyday life in order to get through these kind of challenging periods? And it could be something that's happening, you know, in your real life, or it could just be like the world we live in these days. It can be challenging to keep your peace, right? I mean, there are wars, there's, you know, issues and problems, divisions yeah. in this country, economic issues, like all of these things that impact a person's life. And, and, and the tools of yoga, mindfulness, and meditation are not just, for me, very importantly, not just tools that you use while you're doing them. So you're doing yoga, and for me, I like to do the kind of yoga, I, I'm a yoga teacher, I've learned, uh, I've trained in the methods that are slower and more meditative, you know, as you're holding the pose, you're breathing into parts of your body to really um, calm yourself, there are many different types of yoga. Uh, meditation, you can focus on your breath, right, you can focus on your the breath coming into your lungs and out of your lungs, that's one of my favorite meditations, actually, where I just feel like your, your lungs are rising as the air goes in and falling and rising and falling and just bringing your attention to these things. But uh, what happens after that? What happens after you finish the yoga practice? What happens after you feel like finish the meditation or even the mindfulness practice? If you, you know, people, there's like a practice, you, you know, you take a raisin in your mouth and you spend a lot of time feeling how it feels in your mouth and just trying to stay mindful on what it tastes like and what it feels like. But what happens when you stop doing those practices, Mm -hmm. like the other 23 hours of the day, right? Right. (laughs) Right. How do you bring, how do you bring what you've learned from those practices into your life? And to me, that's really always been the question that I have always have, you know, focused on for myself that yoga is not just done on the mat, it's done off the mat in your everyday life. How do you bring the essence of those practices into your everyday life, because that's the most important thing. Can you keep calm when things are going on? Can you not get swept away in the problem? And, um, you know, these are great practices when you're doing them. They're great practices. But then trying to think throughout the rest of the day, am I using the essence of these practices Mm -hmm. into this moment? I was doing the breathing right along with you. I I could tell you're a teacher. I could just hear that in in (laughs) In your voice, <laughs> and that's so great. And 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 Lorna is, as I say, I really enjoyed Lorna, and and as a character, she really comes together in in my mind. So maybe take us there with some advice. And how do we maintain some of the composure that Lorna's able to maintain? Because she really does have an inner peace, irrespective of this of this potential crisis. She she's facing this. How do we do the same? Well, her peace comes and goes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's true for all of us. Yep. When, you, when you're in a challenging situation, you might be calm one moment and then not calm the next. So she knows a lot of tools that she can pull out of her grab bag, um, yoga, meditation, mindfulness being some, but uh, in many other um, of the different techniques that she uses as well, some of which I'm sure we're going to continue to talk about. But, but it's, you can't change what is. What, you know, the situation that's happening right now, whether that's, you know, is there a question about my health or my baby's health Mm -hmm. in her case, or is, you know, whatever else is going on, you can't change that. So the only thing you can really change is how am I reacting to that? And so for me, when you get centered, when you bring yourself into the, into the present moment and like stop getting all caught up in all of these thoughts that are not really helpful to you, that's. The, that's the way that you can get through these moments the best. So 
So with mindfulness, like I like to do a mindfulness practice all day long, where the minute I sit down at my computer and I put my hand on my mouth or I put my hand on my keyboard, I take a second and just feel how does that feel under my fingers? Like you can do that right now if you're mm-hmm. sitting in a chair. Mm-hmm. How does the back of the chair feel against your back? Or mm-hmm. how does the bottom of the chair feel against your thighs? Are your feet on the floor? You probably didn't notice that your feet were on the floor <laughs> until I say, are your feet on the floor, right? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of things are always happening with our body and the world and where we are all day long that we just don't pay attention to. But when you bring your awareness into that, like if you focus on your feet right now, you can feel like the energy moving in your feet. And the minute you do that, you're not thinking about all the crazy thoughts that were in your head and all the worries and anxiety, you know, a second earlier. Because when you're focusing in that way, you can't be thinking thoughts that are not part of that focus. Mm -hmm. I also like that Lorna has real life inspirations with today's modern spiritual teachers like Gabby Bernstein, New York Times writer, and Eckhart Tolle. Am I, is it Tolle? Tolle, yes. Tolle. Tolle. Yeah. Very impressive. I I really enjoyed how you wove all of that into this. And I I wonder if you'll tell us a little bit about their teachings and how that can give our audience, especially those of us who are over 60, some insights and, and and a couple takeaways perhaps. Sure. So as I mentioned, you know, I'm a big reader of a lot of these kinds of spiritual mm-hmm, books. And mm-hmm. so not surprisingly, I made Lorna a big reader of a mm-hmm. lot of these spiritual books. Mm-hmm. And so in the, throughout the novel, Warrior One, um, she does read and, and kind of uh, talk about a little bit about certain uh, authors and books. And so Gabby Bernstein, you know, she, she teaches The Course in Miracles, which is really about love, mm-hmm. right? And some of the things she talks about is, you know, choose love and spread love. So again, when you're doing that, when you're deciding I'm going to feel love, even if a person is saying something to you that's, you know, and you're getting offended or whatever, if you shift your mind and think, what if that person, you know, really loves me and I really love them, you know, can I ignore what they're saying in this moment that, you know, maybe otherwise would trigger me and we'd get into this fight about it. Like if you just focus on the love that you're feeling, that again, takes you out of the mindset that isn't helpful. And um, Eckhart Tolle is all about, you know, maintaining your inner peace, not getting caught up in the stories that your mind tends to create, right? All of us start to create stories. Why did this person do that? Or, or in Lorna's case, you know, she's decided that there is something wrong with her onboard baby, even before the doctors tell her that, like, you know, before she pulls that kind of thought back and, and gets back to her center. So we, we, we do have a tendency to create a lot of stories that are not helpful to us. And if we focus on the breathing and focus on the present moment, it's a great way to really get out of those stories that are not helpful. And one of the other teachers who I love, who I mentioned in the book, is Esther Hicks, mm-hmm. who talks a lot about appreciation. And one of the exercises that Lorna does that I find very helpful is, you know, when you're thinking about something that isn't, um, doesn't feel good, can you go through the alphabet, start with the letter A, and go through the alphabet thinking of words that describe the person or the thing that's bothering you in a way that's positive? So even if there are some things about the person or the, the situation that are not, you know, that don't feel good, they're always going to be something. So if you start with A and see how far into the alphabet you can get, and as you're appreciating, you're just feeling so good. And again, that shifts your mindset from worry or anger um, into a much better state. You mentioned breath work, and as I say, I kind of did that right along with you. The other thing that that I found in the book that was new to me, actually, is a, a practice, a technique known as crystal bowl relaxation. Would you tell us a little bit about crystal bowl relaxation and and how it might help those of us over 60 improve our wellness and manage some stress? <laughs> sure, sure. So, you know, sound is very powerful, right? I mean, we know that just when you listen to music, it can make you feel happy, it can make you feel sad, it can make you agitated, depending on the type of music you're listening to. And so a lot of yoga centers will offer a crystal bowl meditation, which is a, a beautiful white bowl where the person... Uh, runs a mallet kind of around the rim of the bowl and it resonates in a certain sound. 
that really is very relaxing. So as you sit or lie, usually this is done in a group, you know, kind of like a, a like a yoga class would be, you know, with people lying on the floor on mats or whatever, or sitting up, and they and they play the bowls, usually multiple bowls that have different frequencies. It really calms you in a way that can't really be explained by, you know, it's the tone or it's the sound or whatever. There's just something about the sound and the vibration of the sound from these bowls that's just really very healing. And other things that Lorna does that have to do with music is she goes to a drum circle, which is also has a very kind of the drums have a cadence that puts you in kind of a meditative state or kirtan, which a lot of yoga centers have, which is a, a Hindu you know, yoga practice of chanting kind of the same phrases over and over. And all of these are just different techniques for getting out of thoughts that are not making you feel good and bringing you back to your center. You know, one of the phrases that I remember hearing a Swami say once, a Hindu Swami that I love is, he says, when you think about the expression beside yourself, that means you have yourself, which is your calm, natural, centered place, and you are beside that instead of being in that. So all of these practices are just attempts to kind of bring you back to yourself so that you can feel happier and more peaceful and enjoy your life, which is what we're all striving to be doing. I will be right back with our New Year, New You episode with award-winning author Meryl Davids Landau. New Year is a favorite time of year for me. I love the idea of the reset. For me, I get a chance to do some planning, evaluating, direction setting, deciding on strategies and objectives. This is all really great for my business. And I take the time to really revise my business plan, growth, direction, challenges. And when it comes to my e-commerce strategy, shipping, order fulfillment, those things are just not what I focus on. I'm more about the growth. But in the quest for business growth, efficiency isn't just a buzzword. It's your most valuable player. Our sponsor today, ShipStation, is here to draft that player onto your team by automating the grunt work of order fulfillment. ShipStation sets you free to scale your sales sky high. I've personally experienced the ease of the ShipStation dashboard. Setup is a snap. Managing orders is a breeze. And the savings on shipping rates are substantial. It integrates with all major online platforms, making it a one-stop shipping solution that can grow with your business, no matter its size. The most affordable way to ship everything you sell online. Join the ranks of over 130,000 companies that have transformed their e-commerce operations. Take advantage of industry-leading discounts and let automation carry the load. It's no wonder that once businesses join ShipStation, they stay for the long haul. Ready to elevate your shipping strategy? Head to ShipStation.com and enter the promo code NOB for a free 30-day trial. Make the smart move with ShipStation because when your shipping works smarter, your business grows faster. It's just a fact. That's ShipStation.com promo code NOB. Start shipping smarter today. And just one more quick break before getting back to our author interview with Meryl Davids Landau. Do you have at least $50,000 saved for retirement? (laughs) Does that get your attention? You know, with everything else going on in the world today, right now could be the best time ever to diversify your retirement savings with precious metals like gold and silver. I bought some precious metals myself, and I got them from the top-rated company, GoldCo. They couldn't have made the process easier, and their customer service was impeccable. GoldCo has helped thousands of people, just like you and me, place over $2.5 billion in gold and silver. They're rated A+. By the Better Business Bureau. They've earned over 5,000 five star reviews. They are a seven time Inc. 5,000 winner. And that's just mentioning a few of their accolades. There are plenty more. So, right now, for Not Old Better Show listeners, they're offering up to $10,000 in bonus silver while 
supplies last. Go to goldco.com slash Paul to learn more. That's goldco.com slash Paul. That's me. Diversify your savings with gold and silver today at goldco.com slash Paul. And now back to our interview with Meryl Davids Landau. Please stay tuned. You're going to just enjoy this. Our guest is Meryl Davids Landau. Meryl Davids Landau is a returning guest. We spoke first as a result of her work with Prevention Magazine. We're talking today about her new book, Warrior One, and I'll just say this again, Warrior One, uh, spelled uh, one is W-O-N. It's a wonderful book. I really enjoyed it. I appreciate you sharing it with me. The book is getting great reviews online. I uh, I just seriously enjoyed it, but I'm, I'm not the only one. It's uh, been reviewed by Forward Reviews. Warrior One is spiritual fiction that is both compelling and fun. I enjoyed it so much. And I I wanted to talk to you again, Meryl Davids Landau, because we're kind of at the end of the year. Um, really wonderful time of year, but also stressful. Also a time that we, we think about some life changes. We Maybe some of us think about resolutions. I'm somebody who, who kind of tries to resolve some things over the, over the course of this time period and, and the new year. I wonder if you'd inspire us a little bit with, with Warrior One and how, how some of our listeners can embrace some of these changes and, and take some of these turns positively and, and do so mindfully. So one of the things that Lorna in my novel Warrior One realizes is that you can't really keep focusing on the problem of something if you're trying to change it. And I think sometimes when we make resolutions at the end of the year, Mm -hmm. we get too focused on the problem. I want to stop doing this or I want to, you know, make this thing that I don't like go away or be better. (laughs) And I think when you focus too much on the problem, it, it takes away from A, being calm and peaceful, or B, really finding answers and strategies for getting to the solution. So for me, it's really important to think about if you want to make a change, and if I want to make a change, this is what I try to do, what, what would it look like when that change happens? What would, you know, if I, I want to be more fit instead of focusing on how unfit I am at the moment, you know, what, what would it look like for me to be fit? I picture myself running down the street. I picture myself taking long walks around a beautiful lake. I picture myself, you know, lifting weights and feeling really strong and powerful. And I think that that's a, that's an approach that not only, um, you know, helps us to get to where we want to go. You know, some spiritual teachings even believe that, you know, thoughts are creative as you put yourself in that place, you know, that you're more likely to, to bring yourself there. But even just from a pragmatic standpoint, I'm much more likely to want to get fit if those are my thoughts than if I'm just thinking about, you know, what a couch potato I am. <laughs> how, I hope how, that that's not true. How, you know, no, I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually I like to exercise. I like to exercise. But, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's a common resolution that people make at the end of the year, right? I mean, you go to yeah. the gym in early sure. January and it's loaded with people right. because they've decided that, that they want to get, get more fit. And I think that that's great. But a lot of times it comes from a place of not feeling fit instead of, when I'm fit, this is, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm seeing as my life is going to unfold in that direction. Mm-hmm. Well, as I say, the book is getting great reviews, and I certainly enjoyed it. It's also won several awards in categories like inspiration and women's fiction. What are some of these unique lessons that, that the book offers to some of the aging adults in our audience that are seeking joy and fulfillment in later life? I, I certainly am one of those. This is kind of my second act, and, and I think I, I, I got a great deal of inspiration from the book. I wonder if you touch on a little bit of that. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and for yeah. me to, you know, for, for it to win in like the inspirational category, mm-hmm. I've, I've always said these, that Warrior One is kind of uplifting and and a, a fun book, even though it deals with a very serious topic of a person potentially, you know, having a child with a with a severe um, condition. But that's because you know we, we're we're looking for how do we enhance our life? How do we bring inspiration into our life? And you know, some of some of it is you know through these techniques that that we've talked about that are mentioned in the book. 
that they make a person feel better when you do these things. You feel inspired to go out and make other changes in your life to do things that feel good. And women's fiction, you know, that's a category of books really means that it's the, the main character is a woman <laughs> is really what that means. Mm-hmm. But um, a lot of women's fiction books focus on relationships or, you know, more modern contemporary books focus on a person's success at work. For me, the third pillar of that, which is woven throughout War It One and also Downward Dog, Upward Fog, are the girlfriends, are mm-hmm. the friends. Because having a strong support system of friends who you really feel have your back and you can rely on, I think is a really important for feeling fulfilled and, and having joy. So, you know, I always say if people don't have that currently, like make it your business, to <laughs> make it your resolution mm-hmm. to, you know, find something that you like to do. If you like to garden, then maybe find a garden club where you can meet other people who can potentially, you know, become friends with your friends with you. Or in your yoga, if you go to a yoga class, like seek out people. And people are always afraid to like approach strangers or ask somebody if they want to go out for coffee or whatever. But I think people love to be approached in that way. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, to me, really cultivating new friends and making sure your old friends kind of don't get lost in the business of your work. To me, those are very important things and they're very important parts of my novel. Mm-hmm. It is a pleasure to talk to you and to um, talk specifically about Warrior One, uh, hear a little bit about Downward Dog and Upward Fog. I hope that you and I are going to stay in touch because I I know our audience is going to be eager to hear more from you. I wonder if you'd share with us maybe what you're working on now and... um, and then when you're going to come back and talk to us, I'll just pin you right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am working on the third of the, of okay. the novel. Okay, good. This one actually, one of one of one of Lorna's friends, her her best friend is Janelle, and so the third novel is uh, Yoga Bind, and that focuses on Janelle's um, experiences. That will be out by uh, late next year, so okay, good. hopefully that that will keep plodding along. But, you know, I also do write um, health mm-hmm. uh, articles yep. for many publications. And that's how we, you and I came to speak before, for yeah. what I've written for Prevention Magazine. Yeah. And I've written uh, for quite a number of other uh, publications as well on various health topics. And, you know, keeping your inner peace and de-stressing mm-hmm. and all the things we've been talking about here are such crucial parts of health because, you know, that, that's the key to many um, to treating many conditions is to really work, you know, work on your stress and work on trying to stay center, centered no matter what's really going on in your life. So thank you, Meryl David Landau. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Best Appreciate to you. It, Paul. Oh, of course. Thank you too. Thank you. My thanks to our sponsors today, Gold Co. and ShipStation. Please support our sponsors as they in turn support the show. My thanks to Meryl David Landau. Especially grateful today for her reading from her new book, Warrior One. Please check it out. You can find out more details in our show notes about Meryl Davids Landau and her new book, Warrior One. My thanks to you, our wonderful audience here on radio and podcast. Please be well, be safe, and remember, let's talk about better, the Not Old Better Show. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next week.